Hey everyone, how's it going? It is Chris here, and today we are going to take a little trip around Isla. Um, I really wish we were actually going to Isla. Uh, maybe someday I might, and if I do, I will definitely make sure we document every single second of, of the trip over there. I think that would be awesome. But uh, today we are just going to tour around my uh, my scotch cellar and what uh, what I have here from Isla. And I've got quite a bit just looking at what I've uh, brought out of the cellar. So i um, going to see if I can do this in one video, but possibly, possibly two. But we'll, we'll see. See how long this thing goes. A um, little backstory here about Isla. It's, uh, it's the uh, southernmost island of the um, inner uh, Hebrides of Scotland. And it's known as the Queen of the Hebrides. And a Hebride is like a, a like bunch of little islands kind of all patched kind of together. Um, it lies, um, uh, just north of uh, Jura, about 40 kilometers or, or 22 miles, um, uh, from the uh, northernmost point of the uh, Irish coast. So, um, yeah, in, uh, in Canada, we call like a slang for a kilometer would be a click. So if you, if you're talking to some Canadian and they're like, oh, where do you live? Well, I'm about 40 clicks from Winnipeg. That's 40 kilometers from Winnipeg or about, uh, uh, 24 miles or something like that. Um, but it's the fifth largest island in Scotland and the eighth in the Irish, uh, uh, sorry, in the British Isles. And there's about 3,000 people living on Isla right now. And they do, you know, working in the malt, uh, uh, malting uh, part, you know, making scotch and in the tourist industry. Uh, it was once considered the uh, the crown of Norway. And he was able to, the, um, um, the Norwegian um, guy, he was... Uh, um, no, sorry, the, um, I think it was the, the Isla grandfather, uh, he was able to kind of protect, you know, Jura, Isla, some of the other, um, parts of Scotland, um, because he, he kind of used the Cory Rocken, which is like a gigantic, huge whirlpool, um, uh, Ardbeg actually has, and, and we'll, we'll actually, you know what, we'll, we're going to look at, I've got the Cory Rocken here, uh, but the Cory Rocken is like this huge whirlpool, and it kind of acts as like a, um, uh, a kind of a blockade even, you know, that ships can't get through. So it kind of became the, uh, protector of, uh, of the, those parts in, in, in Scotland. So, um, so, uh, yeah. So let's, let's look at the Scotch and maybe we'll talk a little bit about, uh, you know, maybe some of these fun mythology later on, but, uh, uh, let's see here. I'll start with, uh, Beaumore. And uh, this was the scotch that got me into scotch. Like, I've had scotch before in the past, and I never really took to it. But that was years ago. I was like 20-some 20, 20 years ago, 30, I would even say, dare say, 30 years ago, um, that I really wasn't really too too much into it. I was, you know, the rum guy, beer, wine, that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, this was... This was the uh, the scotch that I really started to come to appreciate. Um, I uh, yeah, I just fell in love with the stuff. Um, so this is my second bottle here, and uh, uh, yeah, you can see that we've got a little bit into it. But I polished one off a little while ago. Uh, you know, um, yeah, this is a this is a cool bottle. This this one's kind of a special one to me, just because. It was the one that really kind of got me into it. I remember I was at uh, Bearskin Airlines uh, years and years ago, and uh, one of my co-pilots uh, really, really, really was trying to get me into scotch. And uh, and I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm really not into it. But we, he, he had this really great scotch. I forget what it was, but I remember it tasting like a campfire. But it was a very expensive scotch. Uh, and um, I... Uh, I thought it was really good, but I haven't been able to find it since, and I certainly don't remember what it was. But when I had that Beaumore 12, it kind of, like, I really liked it. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember having that, you know, around the campfire up in Sioux Lookout. And, uh, and then I really started to appreciate scotch again, and then it just kind of exploded from there. And that was, that was quite a few years ago, but um, um, then I got right right into the stuff. So, um, yeah, so that the, the Beaumore 12 has always been kind of my special scotch because that was the one who really really got me into into it um and then here's the Beaumore 15 uh they used to call this the darkest and uh yeah it's a nice uh 
nice, uh, very nice scotch. And you can see it's a little, a little darker here too, eh? Compared to the, uh, compared to the 12. But uh, yeah, nice, uh, nice 15 year old bottle of, of Beaumont. And uh, like everything, um, these things have been going, uh, m becoming more and more expensive. Uh, it almost seems on a semi-monthly basis. We go to the liquor store here in, in Winnipeg and you'll see uh, these little um, pink um, highlights over top of the over top of the uh, the name of the whiskey or booze or whatever. And you're like, oh, for the love of God, are you seriously going to be raising the price again? You just did this like two months ago. Um, but uh, thanks to our government, they, uh, it's always just tax, tax, tax. So, but there's always ways around it. I get a lot of my stuff in Alberta, which is way cheaper, and they don't have uh, two taxes there. And uh, they're independently owned, so they can kind of make up, sort of kind of make up their own price. But sometimes you'll find that uh, Manitoba has some of the better prices actually anywhere else in Canada. But... Um, so you you gotta know what uh, you know you gotta know your pricing when you're when you're buying this stuff, uh, but this is the Bullmore number one. Uh, this is a, also a very very nice Scotch. I haven't had, I've had this. I haven't opened my bottle, but I have had uh, this particular um, bottle as well from uh, at a friend's place. So um, yeah, really, really really nice uh, nice bottle of Bullmore. I think that's all the Bullmore I have. Um, this is another good one, um, you know, and it's so inexpensive. It's actually gotten more expensive as, as the, the years have been going on. But, uh, I remember you could, you could have gotten this bottle for about 30, $30. Um, now it's up in the mid forties, but if you're just getting into scotch and I always tell people, if you're just getting into scotch, like the Bulmer 12 is, is good, but this one is a really, really nice bottle. If you're getting into peated Isla scotches. Um, it doesn't cost it a lot, so if you don't like it, it's not like you've invested a lot of money in it. But it's the McClellan's Isla 1818. And this is a really nice, nice gentle um, scotch to get into. Nothing super heavy or crazy or anything about it. Uh, it's not like overly peated, like a Lagavulin or a Freug or a Nardbeg, which I really, really, really like. But, oh my god, I can just smell it on my fingers here. God, I, I, you know, somebody has to make a cologne for men that smells like peat, peated scotches, you know, like a, like a nice peaty scotch. Man, I tell you, I don't know if the girls would like it or not, but I'd wear it every day. Um, so yeah, so this McClellan's uh, 1818, the, they have a Highland one, and the Highland one is good too. I don't have that one. I have tried it, but I really, really, really enjoy um, and then see, they got a little map of Isla there, and um, I really enjoyed this one. And it's such a great price point, and uh, and I, I have that one um, quite often on my own. But um, I've got friends coming over, and are not really sure what they like. That is a really go-to to kind of get them into it and gently move them in, into into Scotch and into uh, particularly Isla scotches. Um, here's another one that I've got here. This is the Smokehead, um, Isla Single Malt. It's really kind of a cool, cool canister, you know, all metal. Um, and, uh, you know, really kind of a cool, cool looking lid. And, uh, and here is the bottle itself. And this is incredible. This is really, really, really nice. A uh, buddy of mine was over uh, the other night, and uh, this was on sale uh, last month. So I bought a bottle of it, and uh, um, um, actually, you know, I had this bottle before, but then I bought a second bottle, so I've got two. So I really wanted to open this one, um, um, and uh, so I said, let's let's try this one out. And he hasn't tried it either, and I know he has a bottle of it as well, but. Um, we thought let's let's give this a whirl. Um, and sometimes I like to photograph, um, um, you know, full bottles of scotch or full bottles of whatever before I actually open them up and drink them. And uh, you know, for uh, sometimes you're hired by by companies to do that, and sometimes you just kind of do it on your own, just kind of for the fun of it. 
and uh, in this case it was just kind of for the fun of it so i was i was happy that um you know it's just been busy that i haven't had a chance to do that yet but i'm happy that i've got two bottles so now i can open one and i still have a closed one that i can still document and photograph um let's go to a leg of woolen and this is uh this is the uh, leg of woolen eight year old and this is a crazy good scotch um, kind of like the Wee Beastie uh, from Ardbeg, which is a five-year-old scotch. Um, this eight-year-old, um, uh, like the five-year-old Wee Beastie, it compares to the ten-year-old Ardbeg, and this compares to the sixteen-year-old uh, Lagavulin. Um, but it is quite intense, quite uh, uh, not quite as refined as a sixteen-year-old. You know, you've got the time in the cask, um, you know, mellows, mellows everything. Whereas uh, less time in the cask, um, you still have that intense flavors. You know, it's like um, you're, uh, you're a teenager, you know, and you're still, you know, nothing's going to hurt you. You're still feisty and arrogant and, and spicy and, and you're kind of putting yourself out there. Thank you for like taking me home. Of course. Did you give me the wrong key? No, Kevin, Kevin, that's my key. <laughs> that's not the right key. This, this is the key. It's not right this key. is my house. No, I swear to God, this is my house, right? I swear to you God. You that? This is not my house. This is not my house. And then you get into your 50s, 60s, 70s, um, and you become more mature. Here. Come on. You ask me. Go ahead and ask All me right. if I care. All right. All right. Do you care, Jim? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and ask me. I just asked you. What? Laid back, you know, more mellow, uh, not much of a risk taker, or as you used to be anyway. And that's kind of like how these scotches kind of act as well. Uh, very, very intense uh, peat, uh, flavors to it, um, iodine, uh, a lot of iodine to that one, um, some spice, but a lot of campfire smoke to it. So very, 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 very nice, uh, very nice scotch. Um, We'll do uh, the next one here. We'll do a 16 year old. Uh, seems to be the next uh, way to go. And then we'll go back down in age. We'll go down to a, an 11 year old. But this is, this is easily one of my top five, if not my top three favorite, favorite scotches. The 16 year old leg of woman. It is, to, to say it's amazing is an absolute understatement. It is like, campfire smoke fried crispy bacon um a little bit of iodine um you know to uh, cigar box um you know some uh you know that burnt brown sugar sweet caramel flavors to it this is an incredible incredible bottle um if you can afford to get one uh, get one sometimes they're on sale right now uh, BSW uh, in Calgary has them on sale for about $159. Um, back when I was getting them, they were $149. Uh, now they are $179, so about $180 bucks for a bottle of this. And um, But you know, I was with, um, I buy from BSW and I buy from craft sellers quite a bit out in Calgary. And I got this email once uh, a couple years ago. Um, because you, it was during the pandemic, actually, it was right at the very beginning of the pandemic around early 2020 and, uh, you couldn't get this stuff at all. Like it was impossible. And I got this email from craft sellers and it was said return of the lag. So I clicked on the email and I'm like, Oh my God, lag of woolen for like $90. Are you freaking kidding me? So I went on there and, uh, I think it was the limit was two. So I bought two bottles like right, right away. And uh, by the time I checked out, paid for them, I went back in to see if I can get another two. They're back up to $179. Now they're $189. So $190 for a bottle. I got one for, I got two of them for 90. I couldn't believe it. Um, so uh, I'm always looking for sales on these things because this is my, my one of my absolute favorites. And uh, speaking of awesome, 
amazing scotches. This is the second edition of the Offerman edition, and this is the Guinness cask. This is an 11-year-old uh, scotch, and these are unbelievably amazing. And this one here is finished off in, the, in Guinness casks. And Nick Offerman, he was in a TV show called Parks and Rec, and uh, there's a cool little um, episode there where he actually goes over to Isla, because all he does is, like, his favorite drink is, is Legavulin. But he actually goes to Isla. But they were over in England when uh, Chris Pratt was doing um, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. So they all kind of went over there with him and did some filming over there. And that was those episodes were actually pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, so this is a Nick Offerman edition. I don't, unfortunately, I don't, I never did get the first edition of the Offerman edition, uh, the 11 year old, but I did manage to get the, uh, the second, uh, with a Guinness cast. So this is a really, really, really nice scotch. Um, had one already. I was lucky enough to get two. So this is my second one. And, uh, and then this is the third edition of the Nick Offerman, uh, edition. And this is the, uh, charred oak uh, cask. So very, very nice. I, uh, I, I have, uh, haven't had a chance to try this one yet. I don't think I'm pretty sure I haven't. Um, I had to try so much of it and it's, uh, I'm positive. I haven't had a chance to try this one yet. So, um, I don't even think we can, get, we can't even get this one in Manitoba yet. I was talking to a, a good friend of mine that, uh, works at one of the liquor stores here in Winnipeg. And I said, Oh yeah, if, if we get it, it'll be still another year. So I was able to grab a bottle in, uh, in Calgary at BSW. Um, and they, uh, when they first got them out, craft sellers was selling them at like one bottle per person and same with BSW. But now I think BSW has got a pretty good selection and a, a good amount of them. So I think you can probably grab as many as you like. Um, I might have to get another bottle myself because this is really, really, really nice stuff. Um, and once they're gone, they're gone. They're a uh, limited release. And, um, yeah, once they're gone, they're gone. Like this, this one here is quite sought after. Uh, you can't find them anymore. And this will be uh, in the same, same boat. Um, yeah, so let's, um, let's go over to Lefroig and, uh, and check out to see what they've got there. Uh, just hang on one second. I'm just going to go and grab, uh, grab the bottles out of the, uh, out of the cellar here. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back from the cellar. Um, uh, so this is, uh, this is what I've got for Lefroy. I've got a few bottles here. Um, and we'll start, I wouldn't even say low to high because they're all really good. They're all amazing. And I love, I haven't had a Lefroy I haven't absolutely fell in love with. But this is, uh, this one here is Lefroy Select. And uh, I think this is probably one of the cheapest um, Lefroigs you can get. Uh, no age statement on this one, um, but really, really, really nice scotch. Um, and uh, I really, really like that one. And uh, when you get uh, when you get them, uh, it comes with uh, one of these little guys here. And it's a little card. And, um, you know, it shows you, talks about Lefroig and everything like that, and Isla, you know, that kind of stuff. But um, you see this here. If you go to lefroigcom slash plot, you type in that number there, they will give you a, a one foot by one foot little plot of land. And then if you go to Lefroig, uh, they'll give you, because uh, you've got your uh, registered, you um, uh, you get a free, uh, free uh, drink there at the distillery. And then you can go to your own little plot of land and enjoy it there. So it's kind of, that's kind of cool. Um, and if you keep putting them in, I think every year you got to kind of re-up. You, you can get, you, you get points and stuff. You might get extra things or whatever. And then it's called, uh, you join the Friends of Lefroig. So, um, neat, neat marketing idea. And, uh, you know, when I, uh, if and when I ever get over there, I hope it's a when and not if, um, I plan on, uh, plan on checking that out. Be kind of cool. Next uh, bottle of Lefroy I have here is the quarter cask. So, uh, yeah, this is a really nice, uh, nice bottle itself. This one has gone up in price a lot since, uh, since I was buying it originally. Um, it's, uh, 
it's crazy how much these things have been going up. Yeah. It's actually quite ridiculous. Um, but uh, yeah, really, uh, really nice bottle. Um, really, really flavorful. And you'll see this guy here right there. And uh, you may or may not recognize that. But that is um, the symbol of the Prince of Wales. Uh, two years ago. Um, so this is Lefroy 10. And uh, it comes in this cool little box. You open it up and it's got a little magnet to it. And inside it's got two cool glasses for glasses. So I, uh, I was lucky enough to be able to score two of these guys. I bought one for myself actually when it first first came out. And then I made a lot of hints to my wife that I really desperately needed one of these. Um, and, uh, and, and being the amazing, awesome wife that she is, she got me one. So, uh, just actually finished off my last bottle of, uh, Lefroy 10, uh, about two weeks ago. So I'll be getting into that one. Um, let's see. All right. This one here has become almost a unicorn bottle now. Um, it used to be very common, but now you can't find these things anywhere. This is the triple wood. This is an amazing, amazing scotch. Um, whenever I have friends over that really like scotch and Isla, they always ask if they could try this because they say that there's no way they'd ever be able to find a bottle. Um, anymore so uh, of course I I like to share and and uh, yeah we certainly enjoy it um, but it's usually just you know uh, they're, they're good friends too so they're not sitting there and, and drinking the whole bottle you know they're like oh no I'll just have one you know sometimes we have two but uh, they um, yeah they don't want to drink all of it at, you know sitting there at once so um, these these ones here uh, the, the next few bottles here I got at Spirit Release. Um, three of them were from last year, 2021 Spirit Release. And one of them is from the 2022 Spirit Release. So um, here's one here. And this is the 10 year old, but it's the cask strength version. And it is uh, batch 13 from January, 2021. Uh, I've had this. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to get two bottles of it, and we drank through one, I wouldn't say fairly quickly, but, you know, it took about six, seven months to go through a bottle. Uh, you know, friends coming over, I like to, like I said, I like to share. Uh, we did the same thing with the triple wood. This is a very, very, very nice scotch. Um, and it is uh, at... 57.9%. Uh, um, but yeah, nice, uh, nice bottle for sure. Uh, this one here, uh, I got, uh, like I said, into 2021 spirit release. This is Lefroy, the sherry oaked finish. And, uh, I haven't got into this bottle, but, uh, one of my friends who I was at spirit release with, uh, got one and uh, he opened his and was nice enough to invite me over and we got into into his but really 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 nice really nice bottle um, yeah nice uh, very 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 nice lots of flavors lots of like sherry notes to it um, and really really red uh, um, this one here is the, uh, the Cartius. This is my second bottle. Uh, we got we got one, and then all of the guys that I was there with Spirit Release, um, we all kind of get together and enjoy each other's uh, scotches and stuff, and we, we polished off uh, my first bottle. Um, oh gosh, uh, sometime just before Christmas of this year. So I've got one left. So, uh, I might sit on this one here for a while, we'll see. Um, 
but uh, yeah, nice, uh, very, very nice bottle for sure. This one's at 58.9% uh, um, uh, ABV. And my last bottle of Laphroaig, um, where am I at? Oh geez, it's already 26 minutes. Uh, this is from this year, well, 2022's Spirit release. This was released. This is batch 14 of the 10 year old cask strength from June of 2021. And this is at 58.6%. And uh, I have not had a chance to try this one yet. So um, we can still get these in Winnipeg here. So I might go and get another bottle. Um, to, one to kind of keep and one to uh, uh, over time and then one to, uh, one to drink and enjoy. Um, the only thing is, um, with this particular one, um, this one is from this to this is almost doubled in price from one year. Um, so it's kind of gotten a little ridiculous here with, uh, with scotch. So that's the only reason why I haven't got two bottles of this one yet. So, um, but I still, still might, might have to do that. Uh, just, you know, just to, I always like to try to keep, you know, these good ones here on hold, uh, you know, for the future to enjoy and to kind of go back and uh, do taste comparisons between um, older um, uh, samplings uh, uh, and compare them to new ones. But um, yeah, so we'll probably end up having to do that. Uh, maybe, we'll see. Um, hang on, I'm just going to go back into the cellar and grab out a couple more bottles from my, uh, from my island. I think I'm kind of coming to uh, sort of kind of an end to, uh, to the, uh, to this, uh, journey around Isla, but hang on, I'll be right back.